parable ends with a question. Hmm? This is a parable of Jesus tucked into this gospel reading, right? There's a parable in there. And there's a place within that selection I just read where the parable ends. Hmm? The rest is commentary. I want to try to draw out the parable. I tease the parable out of this gospel. It ends with a question. The question that ends the parable is what do you think the landowner will do to the workers when he comes in person to collect the fruits of the harvest? That's the question. There ends the parable. We're going to come back to that. That's right. Check this out. Self-interest run wild wrecks everything. Can I get an amen? Self-interest run wild wrecks everything. Me, 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 me. That self-interest run wild. Grasping, grasping. Self-interest run wild wrecks everything. Now, unchecked self-interest is always fueled, gets its juice from one thing. Do you know what it is? Starts with an F. It's a clean sermon, y'all. Stop it. Fear. Fear fuels self-interest. And the fear that fuels self-interest is fear that there's not enough. There's not enough. Fear that there's not enough, not enough of anything. But this fear of not enoughness is always a lie. It's never true. In fact, the strong witness of the entire biblical narrative is that there is absolutely enough of everything for everybody and we all have far more than we realize. In fact, God is always trying to give us more. That's what this parable is about. God trying to give us more. More grace, more peace, more mercy, more love. But that darn devil fear, right? Y'all know about fear? Fear makes us forget the unbelievable gift of our own lives. Well, I mean, check this out. No one is in this room right now, sitting in this pew by chance. We are all here. We have flown into this room on the very wings of God's grace. Like if we could do, we don't have time to do this, but if we could, they they wouldn't let me preach this long. But if we could do this, we could go around the room, huh? One by one. And everybody, Joyce, would get a chance to tell their story. And it'd be safe, you know? And you could be vulnerable and tell the entirety of your story from birth to now. At the end of listening to all the stories, we'd be breathless. We'd be moved in the marrow of our beings. We'd be breathless. And at the end of each story, we'd say, my God, bless your beating heart. I can't believe you made it to this moment. The landowner in Jesus' parable is trying to give the workers something, but they won't take it. He's trying to give them his love in the form of job, security, a paycheck, a portion of the harvest, a sustainable plan for their lives in the garden, but they won't take it. Why? Because they want more. Namely, they want it all. And their greed makes them burn with violence and murder. They're scared. And I can see their fear. You know why? Because I know what it feels like to be afraid that there's not enough. 
So this parable is a mirror. And it demands that I look at my own life and ask the question, Hendry, do you know what you've been given? And do you know what God is trying to give you in this very moment? A couple of years ago, I was very, very, very sick unto death. 13 days in the cardiac ICU down at the university hospital just across the way. Today, can you tell? I'm ready to roll, baby. Let's do this thing. Couldn't be more alive. But the question is, do I know what I've been given? A couple of years ago, maybe three years ago now, virus rages across the globe. We can't even be in this room together. We learn how to broadcast. Everybody separated. Today, shoulder to shoulder in the pew, singing our hearts out with the angel choir. I'm going to pass the peace flesh to flesh. Do we know what we've been given? And do we know that God is always trying to give us something? A little bit more than one year ago, on the anniversary of my father's death, I had a very vivid dream about the abundance of my own life. In the dream, I was shocked to realize, y'all ever had a dream you remember? In the dream, I was shocked to realize that our house, the one where I live with my wife and daughters, has an extra room. Extra room in the house. Never knew that before. In the dream was the most amazing room. Like, what's the room? Like, think about this. What's the room that you wish you had in your house right now that has just all the things that you wish you had in that extra room in your house, right? Are you with me? That's the room that I had in the dream. And I found the room in the dream. Like, I didn't know we had it. I found the extra room. I was amazed by it. And then in the dream, I forgot about the room. Does that make sense? I found it, then I forgot we had it. And then I realized, now we're back in the dream, I realized that I always forget about this extra room. Like in the dream, I was like, oh yeah, this is the extra room that we have that I love and it's perfect and that I always forget about. And so therefore, I seldom go into it. Now in my dream, I was showing my big sister, Laura. Laura, who died a couple of years ago. Huh? I was showing her this marvelous extra room that I always forget I have. And Laura, she was a sunny, sunny person anyway, but in the dream, y'all, she was smiling as big as all outdoors as I went on and on about this great room. Look at this, Laura, the room. I can't believe this room we have. And we walked all around the room pointing at all the amazing things. And then we walked over to the window that looks out into the backyard. And we looked out over my backyard, Laura and I did in this dream, and it struck me that there was a whole lot more space in our backyard than I ever realized. And then just as I was realizing that I had more space than I realized in the backyard, off the back porch shoots like a bolt of beautiful lightning our golden retriever, Belle. And Belle makes a big arcing circle in our backyard, far bigger than you could make in the current backyard, because in the dream the thing is huge. And I remember I was so excited in the dream that Laura was there. My big sister, who I miss so terribly, was there. And I was excited that I could show her and that she could see Belle because Laura loves dogs. And then I realized in the dream that I wasn't showing Laura all this extra space. She had come to show it to me. She'd come in the dream, big sister had come in the dream to show it to me. And I turned to say thank you to her in the dream when I realized that she had come to show me. And when I turned, she was not right next to me anymore. She was gone. And I looked across this room, this extra room, and I saw her standing in the doorway leading out of the room. And I went to speak to thank her. I said, Laura, and she interrupted me. She, she always called me buddy, and she said, I know, buddy. I know. She said, I've always known. 
And now you know. And she pointed from her heart to mine. And now you know, she said. You have what you need and more. Don't forget. Don't forget, she said. And then she smiled. As big as all outdoors. And she was gone. She was gone. And I woke. You ever wake from a dream? I woke and I sat up straight in the dark. And her words whispered in my head over and over again. Don't forget. Don't forget. Buddy, you have everything you need and more than you know. More than you know. There is room, she said. There is room. And you know, I do forget. Now, y'all are looking at a full-born human being, y'all. Built-in forgetter. I do forget. I get anxious. I get busy. I get afraid. Some days I get anxious, busy, and afraid all at once. It's a horrible cocktail. Don't try it if you haven't. I forget what a gift life is. I forgot about that dream. I found it in my journal. My big sister came to me in a dream. What a gift God had given me. And if it never happens again, if I never see my big sister in a dream again, it happened then. And that is enough. And the extra room I know now, you know this too, right? The extra room is not in my house. It's in my heart. I have an, a heart, and you do too, that has this in, infinite capacity for spaciousness when we receive the love of God with open arms. And the spaciousness is not in my backyard. It's in the world all around me. My backyard is your heart, and your heart is infinitely spacious. The spaciousness is in the night sky, and the morning light, and the heat of the afternoon. The spaciousness is everywhere, because everywhere we go, we are in the garden of God's luxury. There's room, y'all. I mean, look around. Look at your neighbor and say, God has given us to each other. Can you believe it? Do we know it? Do we know it? Or are we too busy wishing things were different to realize, come on, y'all, to realize we're alive and that life is gift. My friend Ann knows this. She's been talking about it for two weeks. And that God is trying to give us something. And that something is the love that is buried in our own hearts and hanging in the air between us and tying us permanently to Jesus who will never leave us alone. So the parable ends with a question. Hmm? When the owner of the vineyard sees that the workers have not accepted his gift, what will he do? That's the question. And they say, the crowds around him say, he'll kill them. They are wrong. I'm going to say it. They are wrong. Huh? The God I know, the God you know. The landowner has given us this garden of luxury in which we live. Shows his power chiefly in showing mercy and pity and love. See, I remember. There is room in God's heart for all my mistakes. There is room in God's heart for all my misdeeds and my forgetting. There is room. So much room for you and in you. Don't forget. 